Oh yeah, Trey.
Lord, we magnify you. We glorify you. We bless your holy name. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Despite what I'm going through, I will rejoice and be glad. Despite what's going on, I will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, you are good. Your mercy is everlasting. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you the glory. We magnify you. We magnify you. We bless your holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all mind if we break this floor in today?
all about you. But I need God every day, every minute, every hour. Come back here, God. When it's prayer time, these are the moments where we can take it all to God. So I want you to bow your heads and start to just think about God, thanking him for the times when he has come by, thanking him for the times when he has sat with you, things that's going on with you that nobody knows but God, and he cares. So God, we thank you. God, we thank you on today, God. Thanking you for waking us up this morning. Thanking you for starting us on our way. Thanking you for being concerned about everything that is on our hearts and minds, God. Lord, we thank you for protecting us from danger seen and unseen. We thank you for our family. We thank you for food and clothes on our back. We just love you, God. We thank you. God, this morning, I lift up every broken heart, God. 
I put every broken mind before you, God. Those who have questions and concerns, God, and they're looking for an answer, Lord God. I, I lift them up before you, Jesus, because only you know the beginning and the end. God, in your word, you said, I'll go before you. You are already there at the situation, God. You're already working it out. So, God, we thank you. God, I ask that you be a miracle worker, God, that you set our minds and our bodies free, God. For those that are looking for jobs, I, be that, I ask, God, that you bless. For those that are looking for homes, looking for a place to stay, I ask that you bless. For those that cannot see a way out, God, I ask that you be a flashlight in dark places. I ask that you be a guide, God, when there is no way out, God, I ask that you help. God, we thank you for your love, God. We thank you for your peace. But those who are just encountering you, God, every single day, enraptured by your love, God, we thank you, Lord. God, for the sick and shut in, for those who are listening now that are in the hospital or on their bed, God, I ask that you increase their faith, that they believe that there is a God that can fix everything. God, I ask that you bless the doctors and the nurses, those suffering with COVID right now in the name of Jesus. I ask that you begin to heal their respiratory system. I ask that you begin to bring their taste back. I ask that you begin to bring their smell back in the name of Jesus. This sickness will not take them out, God. Oh, death, where is your sting? There is nothing that Jesus cannot resurrect you from. So God, we bless you. We thank you for the man of God who is going to sing, who's going to bring a rhema word, God. I ask that you prepare our hearts and you prepare our minds to hear what thus saith the Lord, God. I ask that you give him everything that he needs in this hour to bring forth the word of God. Now, God, we thank you for being Jehovah Rapha, for being El Rohi, the God who sees us for being the God who cares, for being the God who is always willing and always able to come through, God, who is faithful to perform. We thank you, God, for being matchless, for being almighty, for being almighty God, the one and only true God. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we count all things done in Jesus' name. Thank you for coming by here. Thank you for coming to see about us, God. And so we bless you. We magnify your name. It is in your son's name, Jesus' name, that we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. How come on, we might as well just raise that up. Hallelujah. Can somebody say hallelujah? Lord, you deserve it. You deserve all our glory. You deserve all the honor, all the praise. God, we give it to you in this moment. Come on, hands lifted. Hands lifted. God, you deserve it. You deserve it. If everybody's doing it, no one should feel awkward. Come on, hands up. Hallelujah. Lord, you are worthy. Hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs Yeah. 
Four six this time. You Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you the glory. God, we give you the praise. Some of y'all don't feel like now? it right now. But when you need a blessing, you need God to feel like it. So I Three, dare four. you to raise up a hallelujah in spite of how you're feeling, in spite of what's going on. Lord, I give you the glory. Hallelujah. How many people in the building feel like God is worthy to be praised? If you feel that he is worthy to be praised, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, his name is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Go to the old. Hallelujah. Say, my hallelujah belongs to come on get into worship my hallelujah belongs to you come on sing it with me Let's get into worship. Come on, get into worship. You deserve it. Hallelujah. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. How many people believe that God deserves the worship? If you believe that He deserves the worship and praise. Just stand on your feet and give God a praise right now. If you're at home, just stand up and say it. Come on, sing it with me. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give the Lord some praise in here. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. I want to thank the praise team for getting us through worship. Amen. On today. Amen. And we are going to move forward. Amen. With worship.
on today. The Lord is moving, amen, in such a way, in such a manner that we are looking for God to do something special. I don't know about you, but I'm looking for God to make a change, a, a rearrangement in my life. I'm looking for him to do something special and miraculous because all of the hell that I've been through, all of the stuff I had to endure, I know that there's something on the other end of this that the Lord has in store for me. I wish I had a witness out there in the audience and somebody online to put a whole bunch of hearts on there and say, if, 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 my, if my blessing is going to be predicated on my pain, that I know my blessing is on the way and it's going to be greater than the pain that I received. Amen. 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 We're praising God for another day. We're going to go to the word of God, which is in Joel chapter 2, verses 25, is our text for the day. Amen. Joel chapter 2, verse 25 which is our text for today. Amen. And I am soliciting your prayers. As a matter of fact, I need to pray from the distractions dealing with uh, in the place. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray right now in the name of Jesus. God, that you would come and move in this place. God, we need to hear you. We need to hear from you, oh God. We need to hear a word from you, God. God, not just the Logos word, but the Rhema word. God, we ask right now that you would move like you've never moved before. In Jesus' name, we thank you and do pray. Amen. 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 Joel chapter 2. Amen. Turn him down in the, in the monitors. Turn him down in the monitors. The organ is way too loud in his monitors. Amen. Amen. Joel chapter 2, verse 25 says, The Lord says, I will give you back what you lost to the swarming locusts, to the hopping locusts, to the stripping locusts, and the cutting locusts. It was I who sent this great destroying army against you. And I'm going to read that again. The Lord says, I will give you back what you lost to the swarming locusts, to the hopping locusts, to the stripping locusts, and the cutting locusts. And it was I who sent this great destroying army against you and that is the reading of the word and we're going to go from the simple subject it's all coming back amen it's all coming back it's all coming back amen 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 praise God the Lord spoke to me in terms of this house and in terms of the people that are following this ministry, that this scripture is coming to pass, that God is speaking prophetically over this ministry, that things are being restored in this season. Uh, God says, I'm going to give it back to you. If you read the King James Version, he says, and I will, I will restore to you the years. And, and, and this text is coming from the prophet Joel. And they will like to say that this prophet is a minor prophet. But the only reason why they disclaimed him as a, or identify him as a minor prophet is because it wasn't much that he wrote but it wasn't 
that he was minor in his stature. It wasn't that he was minor in who he was. He was just minor in what they recorded of what he said. Uh, I want y'all to understand something. Uh, when God is speaking, uh, uh, it's not about the fact of what was recorded. It's about what impact the life of the people. And what God is saying is that when you find this text and find the prophet Joel, who is speaking to the southern kingdom of uh, 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 the praisers of Judah, he's speaking to them to let them know that the reason why things happened to you in the first place uh, is because I was punishing you for the things uh, that you did not do or the things that you did that were not pleasing to my sight. Uh, is there anybody in here that can relate to the people of God that I'm not always doing everything that God wants me to do? I'm not always pleasing in the eyesight of God. I'm not always, we all have come short of the glory of God. Do I got a witness that can say I'm not always doing the right thing, going in the right direction, saying the right thing, helping the right people. But God says that in the process of punishing them, I'm going to give them back what I took from them. Is there anybody in here that can say I've been on punishment for a minute. God had to take some things away from me and I'm looking forward to what God is going to give back to me in this season. What you'll find out in this text, the first thing that alarms me is that the Bible says that he will give back what we lost to the locusts. Uh, the question I have for the text is, God, if the locusts are a destroying insect, when you'll find out in the King James Version, it talks about the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm. Uh, it, it, it says that they have eaten away uh, uh, um, their, their, their produce and uh, they've eaten away uh, their harvest. Uh, 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 and what God says is he sent them to, to destroy their harvest. Uh, but where did they harvest come from in the first place? Uh, the reason why God has the ability to take away something uh, is because it was him that gave it in the first place. Uh, and most of us don't recognize or realize uh, that if I'm going through a recession, uh, if God decides he wants to take it away, it was God who gave it in the first place. Uh, and some of us needed to be on a recession because you didn't know how to handle what God gave you in the first place. Uh, God says, all I asked you for was 10%, and you don't even know how to do that. And God says, listen, I had to show you by by taking all of it to say that I thank God for the 10% of it. Watch this. But my question, Lady Belt, to the text was, why would you even create locusts uh, 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 if locusts is going to be bad for us? That don't make sense. Make it make sense to me, God. And God says, listen, uh, it, it ain't that the locust, uh, uh, what you'll find out is that the canker worm was considered the swarming locust. And it, you'll find out that the caterpillar was considered the hopping locust. And uh, the palmer worm was considered the cutting locust. And what he says is that all of these have their purpose in, in life. Uh, 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 all of them have their purpose in what they're supposed to eat up and what they're supposed to do. Uh, but too much of anything Thing will cause destruction. Uh, and I want y'all to understand what is in your life that has been your canker worm and your palmer worm and your caterpillar is the things that you've been doing too much of. Uh, oh, let me pull you up off of your pew. Uh, some of y'all been doing too much gossiping. Uh, some of y'all been doing too much drinking. Uh, some of y'all been doing too much smoking. Uh, some of y'all been doing too much of anything. And God says too much of that is destroying your life. Uh, whenever we talk about gluttony, we only talk about overeating. But gluttony means to do something, anything in indulge. To indulge too much in anything. See, some of us don't realize that sometimes we church too much. 
I didn't say we God too much. I say we church too much. And because you're churching too much, too much of anything is wrong. And God says that's why your family is falling apart at home because you're too busy at the church, churching when other people can do what you do. And you need to minister to your home because the first place you're supposed to minister is to the people that's up under you. Can I pause for a moment? Can I pause for a moment? Uh, this ain't my house. This is God's house. And if I got to take a break to take care of my family, I'm going to go and take care of my. You better understand something, beloved. You better take a break because when God tells you to leave, you need to be careful and comfortable with what God says, not what people say. So I tell people, uh, you need to take a break because too much of anything can be destroying. Watch this. Uh, most of us are, are, are looking at things in our life that we've put in God's seat. Y'all, do you understand that God is not his name, it's his position? <laughs> Y'all, uh, uh, is he Lord over your life? When we call him Lord, we're asking, is he, it, it means that he is the uh, uh, influencing force in your life. Uh, uh, but ask yourself the question. Please don't reply to this out loud. Uh, 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 is God the uh, influencing force in your life? Everything that you do outside of Sunday, is he the influencing force in your life? If he's not, then that's where you need to be striving to be. And this is what God is saying. He says, the only thing I don't have a problem with you do too, doing too much of is having a relationship with me. Because the Bible says that we should always pray. We should always be in communication with God. So God says, the only thing that you can overindulge in is being with me. And all I'm going to do is tell you to have a balanced life and go and spend time with your family and spend time with the people around you. Because that's what I ordained them to be around you for. Y'all, he says, reason why you've been destroyed, the reason why you suffered a loss is because you've been overindulging in things. And some of us overindulge in work, then wonder why we get home and it's hell at home because you've been missing at work. Ask yourself the question, do that money buy you peace? We're too busy trying to pack our pockets that we don't realize that packing our pack pockets don't pack peace. Woo! I'm speaking to somebody up in here. You're so worried about money that you don't understand that your key is just want your presence. <laughs> They don't want your presence. Huh? They want your presence. Huh? They want you to be there. I want to have memories huh? because I don't even remember what my mama bought me for my fifth uh, Christmas. Huh? I don't even remember the toys that she bought me, but I do remember the things she imparted in me. Is there anybody in here that can say, I want your presence more than your presence. Huh? I want you to come and be around me than to give me gifts with your money. I need your uh, wisdom. I need your knowledge. I need your understanding. I need your testimony because if I'm going to live this life and be better then I need your wisdom not your gifts watch this uh, watch, watch what happens lady belt uh, if it's restore then that means that with restoration comes renovation <laughs> yeah, write that down with restoration comes renovation. Because what I found out, because we had this situation with the fellowship hall, watch this, uh, what I found out is that in order for something to be restored, it has to either be destroyed or deemed non-functional. Uh, the question is, can you go through the demolition phase in order to get the renovation phase? I said, can you go through the demolition phase 
And see, everybody wants to be restored, but don't nobody want to be tore down. Uh, the, the, but God is trying to tell you is that in order for you to get the restoration, huh, you got to submit to the demolition. Huh, and the demolition is ugly. Huh, the demolition hurts. Huh, the demolition costs you something. And if I got to go down in order to go up, huh, I got to submit to the demolition. Is there anybody in here that can say, I'm submitting to the demolition because I want to be better? Here's a blessing. Here's a blessing, Kurt. Uh, 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 Deacon Harrison. Uh, uh, but here's the blessing in that is who's doing the renovating? If it was me doing the renovating, then I, I, I would be worried about the re renovation. Uh, 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 Deacon Wilbur, uh, if it was you doing it, as much as I love you, I would still be worried that you wouldn't do certain things right. But thanks be unto God that the text says that I, that's God speaking. He says, I will restore unto you the years that you lost. Is there anybody in here huh, that can say thanks be unto God that he's doing the renovation? Huh? Because I know when he do the renovation, what he's going to do is he's going to size up what he tore down huh, and say when I build it back up, huh, it ain't worth the same value. I, there's got something better in this in the store right now. Huh? Because what I, what I tore down, it don't have the same value. So now I got to buy something that's more efficient to replace it with. Huh? I know you lost some friends in the last season. He said, God, I had to tear them down. Huh? And the new friends you get going to be better than the last friends because now it's time for an upgrade. Huh? Do I got somebody out here that can tell God thank you for the upgrade and the renovation because what you're doing in this season, you're going to give me better than what I had before. Give it to me. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Give it to me. Amen. Amen. Listen to me. Amen. Amen. Listen. Uh, uh, he says, uh, I'm the one that's going to do the restoring. Watch this. He says, I'm the one that's going to restore. Uh, and what he's saying is whatever you lost, I'm going to give it back to you better. Uh, uh, in the process uh, in the process of going to the insurance company and the constructors about the building, huh, what we learned is that uh, they don't make floors like that no more. <laughs> what we found out, the, con the contractor came to us and said, Pastor Belk, I'm sorry, but we want to restore this back to the way it was. It's our job to restore it back to the way it was, but they don't make floors like this no more. He says, we got to upgrade you to a different value. He says, I got to give you something better than what was destroyed. Do I got somebody out there that can say, in this season, I'm getting better joy. I'm getting better peace. I'm getting better peace of mind. God says, I'm, re I'm, I'm restoring you and renovating you all at the same time. He said, this time it's going to be better. <laughs> but here's the problem. Can I preach my experience with the insurance company? It's a problem. Uh, uh, in the process of restoration, renovation, there comes an ugly phase. In the process of being renovated, you might not be as polished as you was before. People walking in the fellowship hall to plastic. People walking into our beautiful fellowship hall to the wall being boarded up with insulation that's ugly. <laughs> because in the process of being renovated, I got to be able to submit to the ugly phase. I wish I had a church up in here uh, uh, because sometimes my my situation might look ugly but watch out and just give me some time all I gotta do is show you when the finished product comes you're gonna see that it's gonna be better than it was before ah. 
Look at your neighbor and say, I might be in an ugly phase right now. My attitude might be ugly. I, I might not be, I might not have as much makeup on. I might be in an ugly phase right now, but when God restores me, I might have a, a, a couple of quarantine pounds on right now, but when God restores me, God says, listen, I'm about to restore you, but you got to submit to the demolition and you got to understand that there's an ugly phase because it's time in between renovation and restoration. That spoke to my spirit. There's time in between renovation and restoration. Woo! Y'all, here's the funny thing. Is that in the process of renovating, you have to tear down some stuff. Because I don't want it to look like it did before. Because what was before worked for what was before. Yeah. Right. See, I don't have enough time. I don't have enough time. Y'all, some friends are seasonal. Some people in your life are seasonal. And God will take you through the demolition phase and filter out phony people and only to take you to the next level to build you to new people but you so worry about losing the old ones that you don't want to embrace the new ones. See, you're going to have a problem when we restore this building and when we get this place back in order, there's going to be some people that like it and there's going to be people that don't like it because some people are hanging on to the old and say, baby, I wish we, I want to go back to the old choir stand. I want to go back to the old things because I don't want to embrace the new. I want to hold on to the old. But baby, if I'm going to renovate you, you got to let go of what was old and it wasn't efficient. We ain't had a choir in over two years but God says I gotta renovate and remove stuff because I want it to be functional you don't need that clingy friend in this season you don't need that friend that pull you back and forth from the club to church you need that one that's gonna pray you out of the club and dance with you in the church in this season. I didn't say that this person didn't have a purpose in that season. But when God says, I'm about to renovate you and restore you, he says, I'm going to build you up a different uh, a, a basis of people around you so that they can help you in this season. That's the problem that we have is that we're holding on to people that God tried to destroy in the demolition. experience I'm a pat rat I have a hard time let things go especially things that function because if it still work But what if God say that I want all things new in this season? Yeah. <laughs> Can I preach? Can I preach a perspective from Bernard? I pulled out old, old speakers from when the church was first opened. You see them white speakers over there in the corner? Yeah. Old speakers when the church, because I said, y'all, we need speakers for back here. So praise team said they can't hear themselves. Put the speakers in, plug them in, and they worked. Bernard says we still got budget so we can go buy new. Here I am arguing with him saying, but these work. But watch this. Watch this. Bernard says, but those old speakers don't look good on this new floor. 
He said, Pastor, if we're going all new, then why drag the old? Watch this. When he got to Guitar Center, watch how God worked. The speakers that were supposed to be 230 ended up being 200. Then when we got here, he said, these are a higher wattage than the ones we thought we was going to get. Because we stepped forward and went with the new, God gave us something even more efficient for a lower price. I wish I had somebody in here that said that the new stuff is going to come at a bargain price. Uh, is there anybody in here that can say all things new? Uh, I want all things new. New car. I want a new house. I want a new husband. I want a new wife. I want a new relationship. I want everything new. And everything new going to be better and it's gonna, not going to cost as much. <laughs> Says... Watch this. Um, here's another thing about the speaker situation. Speakers come from here, and they pull back from, what is it called? An amp amplifier in the back. Uh, Booker says, if you go the old way, all of the speakers across here are going to pull from the power that's supposed to be here. But when Bernard and Booker said, let's get power, the source of power for these go directly to there and don't pull from these. So in other words, if I would have kept the old ones, it would have drained the power. <laughs> y'all, Some of y'all need to let go. Because what you're doing is allowing old things to drain your power. Oh, you're, you're bringing old things with you. And that old thing has still got the same issues and the same problems. And I got to pray for you at the same time at 2 o'clock in the morning. Every time you call, you're draining. And God says, I got to cut the cord and let you go in this season. And my new prayer partner is going to be able to power me up instead of me always powering them up. What's the point of having a prayer partner that drains you? This cord, the speaker, is connected to the power directly. In other words, it gets its power directly from the source. It doesn't pull. What he said is, in the process of upgrading, I'm going to give you some people with power that can help you without draining you. I'm preaching better than y'all. <laughs> Woo, Jesus. What God is declaring over your life is that these people and the things that are happening in your life is not just going to upgrade you, but it's going to reserve your power. Meaning I won't have to go on vacation as much if I ain't getting drained as much. If I could go to the people, the Bible says, confess your faults to one another so that you might be healed. But if I come to you and you drain me every time, I don't even get a word in to tell you what's going on with me because you're always talking about you. But if I could get somebody that could pause for a moment and just say, how you doing? Huh? How is everything going on in your house? Huh? I know it looked picture perfect in the, uh, on, online and on social media, but I how are you doing and can you have an opportunity to give a confession to the people around you because they got an actual power source to themselves y'all we dealing with people that are draining us watch this um, but the question is the process of being restored the whole point that God did that he tore them down, watch this, he tore them down because he wanted to teach them a lesson. Y'all, I, I said, he tore them down in order to teach them a lesson.
question is, God, when something happens in my life, what are you trying to teach me? But restoration does not come until you identify that you learned the lesson. The question is, have you even asked God the question, why you in the predicament you in in the first place? See, you got to understand there's a reason for everything, and God has an answer for every question, but you got to be able to ask God the question and wait on his answer. Here's the problem. We don't want to wait. Because in the process of me talking to the contractor, uh, uh, what I found out is that the contractor told me that it was going to at least take 60 days to renovate and restore the wall. Now, I could believe God for something faster and more expedient because I don't like being in the ugly phase. But what I did was submit it to God's timing and doubled the time frame that they said so that I won't be upset when it doesn't happen in the time that I want it to happen. Nobody want to talk about that. Everybody want to talk about being restored, but you don't want to talk about the time it takes to be restored. Because what I told the contractor is don't rush the job because I want it done right. Yeah. Some of us are asking God to rush the job. And God is saying, no, I need to let this thing marinate. You ever took some food out too early and say, no, you had every good intention, but it didn't stay in long enough. You ever bake a cake and pull a cake out too early and then it fall? You said, man, I taste the ingredients and the ingredients are good, but you didn't wait long enough. God says, listen, in this season, what I'm trying to get you to do is wait so that it can be right. Somebody shout, wait so it's right. Huh? Because I want it to be right in this season. I went wrong a long time ago. I went wrong the last season and this season I'm going to wait because last time I rushed it the reason why I married that hell, hellish man in the first place because I rushed it the reason why I married that Jezebel in the first place because I rushed it but this time, I'm going to see if you love God. Uh, this time, our first date going to be in church. Uh, this time, our first date is going to be, let me see if you know how to worship God. Can you at least clap your hand? Or are you putting on a front for me because you're trying to get at me? I I'm trying to find out where your heart at because as long as you got a good heart, then I know that God can work on you. But if you got a stony heart and don't even like God, then I know that you're not the person for me because I love him. It's in his timing. It's in his timing. But you got to understand, you got to learn the lesson. Learn what God is trying to say so that he can restore you. Submit to the process and wait on God's timing. Jesus did not like the phase God was about to take him through. He goes to the Garden of Gethsemane. I would shout it if I, would, if I had a voice. He goes to the Garden of Gethsemane and said, I don't want to go through this renovation phase. He says, I don't want to go through being broken down. I don't want to go to having going to Calvary and having to be broken down. I don't want to have to take on the sins of the world. But God says, watch this, he tells him, not my will, but thy will be done. And God doesn't say a word. Some of us don't understand God's silence in this season. You don't want to submit to God's word. You don't want to submit to what God is saying and you don't want to submit to the renovation but God is being silent because he know where you want to go. Huh? He know where he's taking you. Huh? He knows where he, what he's doing with you and so he's taking you through the renovation because if it wasn't for the renovation, huh, Jesus wouldn't have got up after three days huh, with all power in his hands. Huh? He was better than he was when he went down. Do I got somebody out here that can say when I come back, huh, 
I'm coming back better huh? and I'm going to be restored better huh? I'm going to be renovated huh? things that I used to do huh? I'm going to be able to do better than I did before huh? God is going to restore my youth unto me because the Lord giveth huh? and the Lord taketh away huh? but blessed be the name of the Lord huh? I'm going to praise him while I'm in the renovation I'm going to praise him out of the renovation I'm going to praise him through the renovation is there anybody in here that can say I'm being rebuilt huh? and I'm being restored huh? is there anybody in here can say I'm submitting to the rebuilding say I'm submitting to the restoration God I want you to give me everything back it's all coming back but it ain't coming back the way it was it's coming back better I just believe that on today I just speak that over this house on today it's coming back better it's coming back better I lost my mind last season. It's coming back better. I lost a job last season. It's coming back better. Y'all, husbands and wives have been lost. It's coming back better. Because I got to understand that all things work together. That's even in my divorce. it, It all works together. Even when friends left me desolate. The ones that I broke my back for. It all works together. So we have to submit that God is doing it. He's making a way. Even in the process of our pain, it's a process of our change. I said in the process of our pain, it's the process of our change. If anybody's going through pain right now, means you're going through change right now. One thing I've learned is when I was pushed to my limit is that I knew how far I could go. The only way that you can stamp an approval on something being unbreakable is that you have to test it falling at high places. You've got to try it under hard test. The only way you can say it's unbreakable is that you try to break the thing that you want to claim is unbreakable. That's our word for 2021, that we're unbreakable. And 2020 didn't break us, then that means we're unbreakable. And we're going to walk in that unbreakable state And that unbreakable word, understanding that I made it through the test that was meant to break me. Y'all, you don't recognize God's power in your life until all your power is exhausted. You don't recognize how much you can take till you take way more than you thought you could. You ever look back on your life say, why didn't I lose my mind? How did I keep my sanity? Why didn't I snap and kill them? It was God that held you together. Oh, I know I'm talking to somebody up in here. It was God that held you together. There's times where you cried till you couldn't cry no more. You ever cry so much that you feel like dust going to come out of your eye ducts? I can't cry no more. But God gave you strength. And I want to declare that over this house. You're unbreakable. Reason why it didn't break you? Because what he put inside of you is the substance that's on the inside of you. Greater is he that is within you 
than he that is in the world. Because it's not that what hits you couldn't break something else. You can take a hammer and hit something and break it. But if you hit the unbreakable thing, it can dent it, but it just won't break it. Look at somebody and tell them, I got the scars to show that I'm unbreakable. Because it hit me. It scarred me. It dented me. But it didn't break me. How do you know it didn't break you? Because I'm still here. I'm speaking to somebody. The surgery didn't break you. The people that left you didn't break you. The addiction didn't break you. It dented you. It caused flaws in your character. But it did not break you. And don't you ever let anyone try to tell you that what happened to you wasn't God ordained. Because the Bible says, it was I who sent this great destroying army against you. And in the book of Job, the only way the enemy was able to get at Job is when he got God's permission. It's not that God creates evil, he releases it. But he has the power to release it only to the measure you're able to take. Because it's not that you can't break. It's that he knows how to keep on giving you things that can only test you but won't break you. Hallelujah. Let me cut this thing off. But I needed somebody in here to know. And somebody online to know that you got to submit to the renovation. Submit to the restoration. If you want everything back that you lost, you have to submit to what God is going to do in you. He's going to bless you. He's going to restore you. But you got to go through the pain of being demoed. And you got to go through the ugly phase of being restored and renovated. So if there's anybody here that does not know Jesus Christ, has not accepted him as your Lord and Savior, listen, this is your opportunity to give your life to Christ on today. Listen, if you're online and you decide you want to give your life to Christ, you can just raise your hand and put the hand emoji on there and say, I have not accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior. Listen, this is what we want to do. We, all we want you to do is say this simple prayer. Say, I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sins and God raised him from the dead. Because I believe that, I am saved and sealed until the day of redemption right now. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We accept you into Jesus' family. It's not our family, but into Jesus' family. But if you want to be a part of this local church, you can do that as well. You can do it online. If there's anybody in the building that wants to do it, listen, you can do that right now. But we're not putting you into any pressure as long as you're somewhere where they're preaching Jesus Christ, dying for your sins and God raising him from the dead. We're okay. The Bible just says, forsake not the assembly of the brethren. God is looking for you. He's searching for you. He wants you to be consistent with him so that he can make you into what he intended for you to be when he formed you. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. I, I want it all back. I don't know about y'all, but everything I lost, I want it back. But not just back, but better. Not just back, but better. Amen? Amen. Amen. Listen, it's giving time. We thank God.
that it's, we have uh, something to give. Because I remember there was a time when I didn't have to give. So I thank God that I have something to give. And so we want you to do what you've been doing. We've been doing a fantastic job of paying our tithes and our offering. And we ask that you would search your own heart. Because it's not as a debt that you owe, but as a seed that you sow unto God. He's testing your trust in him. Do you trust me or do you trust your money? Listen, if there's anybody in the building that has cash or checks, please let us know so that we can come around and get it from you. But we're at about 90% electronic. You could go on Cash App, Givelify, Zelle. Uh, we have so many different ways you can give. Uh, and so please make sure that you're doing that. Also, you can see the evidence of Project 2021. Amen. We are starting our Project 2021, and we want to be done by the summertime, amen? We want to be done by July, but we want you to commit to a hundred, at least $100. Listen, don't let that $100 cap you. If the Lord tells you to give five, if the Lord tells you to give a thousand, that's on you. That's between you and God, but we're saying at least 100 above your tithes and offering so that we can get things done in our church. Amen? Amen. We're trying to fulfill the prophecy. The prophecy of Pastor Spencer was that you're going to walk into this building and not even recognize it. You heard what I said. I'm trying to fulfill the prophecy of my predecessor. He says, you're going to fulfill the prophecy. The prophecy was they're not going to recognize this place when they come in it. That already has transpired in the spirit, but now we want it to happen in the physical. Yeah, you have to honor the people that came before you. And when, when I heard that he said that, I heard it at his home going. They was praying, playing the home going, at the home going, a sermon of his over the system and I heard it that was the thing that came ringing in my ear I wasn't even in the running to be pastor of this church it wasn't even across my mind but I heard it I don't know who made the decision to play his sermon at the funeral but it was literally Moses speaking to Joshua I heard the words of Moses tell me what to do with the flock to Joshua. I was at the funeral to honor my cousin. But in the process of obedience, I heard instruction. Did y'all hear what I just said? In the process of obedience, I heard instructions. And so what I've been doing, the driving force of doing what I've been doing at this church has come from God and from that instruction that I heard from my Moses to tell me to renovate the building. If you want to renovate, you want to start with the core first. Then you renovate the outside. The spirit had to be changed first. You can definitely feel a different spirit in this house. The spirit had to be changed. Now God is changing the exterior to match the interior. Everything I ask for, everything I ask for is either being done by Project 2021 or by the renovation because of this restoration. I said the exterior need to be painted. They said, Pastor, because the structural interior has been messed up, not only are we going to paint the front, but we're going to paint the sides too.
Y'all don't understand. That was a cue. That was a cue to shout right there. Because y'all know I'm not a begging pastor. If 2021 don't get it, I'll put it out of my own pocket. But God says, keep your money in your pocket. I'm going to do it with some. And it ain't that I haven't given because I've already given over 500. But what God is saying is that what the people won't do, I'll do. Anyway. Anyway, we got to go. We got to go. We got to go. We got to go. Amen. I want to say thank you uh, to everybody that has contributed to the 2021 so far. We have been able to get some stuff done. I don't know if y'all see it on, online, but we were able to get some stuff done. The wall has came down, and we've got Bernard up here on, on the pulpit. We've got the drums up here. We've got the, got the bass player all up here. So now all of this area is free. So whenever somebody, if anybody feel like running right now, there's space. If anybody feel like they want to run, we got a lane with your name on it. <laughs> so, I told you, in the process of renovation, you have to make things functional. It wasn't functional before to the spirit that's in the house now. We had tables and chairs here that wasn't conducive of a running, praising church. Oh, Jesus. I'm just showing you what God is doing. Listen, happy birthday to all of the people who have a birthday this week. We thank God for you. We praise God that the Lord has blessed you. With another year, amen, amen, amen. Do we have any special birthdays in the house? Amen, amen, amen. We've got Gwen in the house, amen. And we thank God for her happy birthday to you, amen. God bless you, amen, amen. Um, Bible class is Wednesday. Uh, have you been enjoying the hot topics we've been going over? Bible study is Wednesday. We're in a series right now um, talking about um, balance, series on balance. So I'll be probably closing that out this Wednesday. Amen. Prayer call is on Thursdays at 6 a.m. Amen. We're doing the laundromat, uh, laundromat love at multiple locations. Amen. So what we're going to do with that project is that we're going to surprise people and pop up at the laundromat. See, we ain't telling you because we know you, you greedy people, not needy people. Be lined up all the way down the street. We're going to pop up at several different locations in the city of Detroit and just pay for everybody's clothes to be cl clean. Not only... Not only are we doing that, but we're going to supply them with a laundry basket full of supplies. I know some of y'all seen the laundry baskets as you walked in the door, but we, we are doing that for hundreds of people, hundreds of people at different locations. Now listen, if you're a member here and you can't clean your laundry and you're having issues, come see me separately and we'll take care of you, but this is for the external people. We're trying to do this for the external, but if you have an issue and a concern where you're in a, in a place of need, keyword, need, uh, we will definitely help you. We want to help anybody that's in need. Amen. We're just trying to filter out the people that are being greedy because some of us are just greedy by nature. You ever have a pocket full of money and still pick up a dollar? I'm like, hey, man. I mean, a pocket full of money. No one that could bless somebody else. You just go. We're naturally greedy. 
You ever have a bucket full of money, somebody offer to help you out, and you, you still take it? Knowing you got a pocket full of money, knowing you just got your tax refund. People talking about, I'm going to pay for dinner. No, let me pay for your dinner this time. You always pay for my dinner. Naturally greedy. We got to get out of that. We got to learn how to give. The Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Give. We don't have a problem with receiving. The Bible gives us instructions on giving because we have a problem with giving. So, so this is what we want to do. We need a lot of volunteers with Toll Ministry TLC. We want to make sure that we get enough people. So please uh, keep your eyes open to when we're doing this and, and the volunteers that we need to get this stuff done. Amen? Amen. We have restoration will take place this week. I may need some manpower because if we're going to remove and replenish all of the carpet we got to take these pews out of here and so we're going to take them out of this door try to put them in our uh, container in the back so I need some manpower and we'll put it out there and we'll let you know via text or transformers only when we're doing that that's going to either be Tuesday or Wednesday amen amen and then we also have uh, registration for um the laptops that we're giving away, we're giving away 250 laptops to children that are in need because what happens is after the school year is over, after the school year is over, they have to turn in those computers. So all summer long, they can't work on their, um, on their schoolwork in order to get themselves together, their academics to get themselves together for when school go back in. So we're going to give them uh, laptops. These are not used, brand new laptops. We're giving them 250. Um, we're going to have registration for that as well. You can do that at transformationlifecenterdetroit.org. We have our own website for our 501c3 now. Amen. Amen. So you can, go, you can register for... Uh, those laptops. Now, that's not excluded to the external, right? We have, if there's somebody internally, if somebody internally need those laptops, go ahead. We can do this on internal, okay? All right, and then, um, yep, I already said that. Me and this week for Project 2021. All right, amen. Let me pray, and we're going to get out of here. Communion. Where is it at? Did everybody get it? Everybody been passed out their communion? All right, come on, deacons, come on up here with the scripture and the word and the prayer. Amen, amen. I will be reading 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 34. And it reads, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned of the, with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. 
And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. The word is already blessed. Amen. Can we all bow our heads? Dearly Father, we come to you one more day with humbled heads and humble hearts, Lord, just thanking you for another chance to revere your word and to take in this word, Lord. So please, would you uh, put your blessings over this uh, communion that we're getting ready to have, Lord. Let every heart be softened. If there's any ought that anyone has against anyone in the house, please let them make that right in their hearts, Lord. Please let everyone who takes this take it, not for carnal reasons or for worldly reasons, but for spiritual reasons, Lord. And these things we pray in your mighty name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Listen, Jesus was sitting around the common table. It's what we call the Last Supper. After he washed the feet of the disciples, he sat at a table with them and said, one of you are going to betray me. Them knowing him to be a prophet, they said, Lord, is it I? Lord, is it I? He said, it's the one that dippeth in the cup with me. They all had dipped in the cup. He says, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take, eat ye all of it. After the same manner, he grabbed the cup. He says, this is the New Testament in my blood. For without the shedding of blood, there is no remission for sin. Take, drink ye all of it. Amen, amen. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for Listen One day when I was lost He died upon the cross And I know it was the blood for me Heavenly Father, we come, God, thanking you for this day Thank you for the word, God, we're going to get it all back we thank you for it, and it's going to be better than it was before, God. God, we thank you for the restoration, restoration of peace and joy, our minds being regulated. God, we just thank you that in this season, God, you're giving us back what the locust took away from us, oh God. And we thank you right now. God, that you're going to bless us and keep us, oh God, as we keep our minds stayed on you. God, you're going to continue to keep us in perfect peace. God, we ask that you would walk with the walkers, ride with the riders, drive with the drivers, view with the viewers, oh God. We ask that you would just be with us all, God. God, until we meet again, it is in Jesus' name we thank you and do pray. Amen. For me, one day when I was lost. He died upon the cross, and I know it was the blood for me. Listen, pause. We might not have uh, Minister Spencer here next first, first Sunday. Can we get her to sing the song? Just one time for us, please. Huh. The blood. Amen. Please. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. It reaches to the high.
me strength from day to day. It will never lose its power. Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know if you saw it, but we posted that Minister Spencer, along with Minister Kyle Phillips, along with Reverend Wicks, along with Deacon Harrison, along with Deacon Wilburn, will be licensed and ordained next Sunday.
listen, you might want to shut off that live. You might want to shut off that live. Because they might not want to be involved with this. But every last one of them have a testimony. And I got my own testimony. The devil didn't want this to happen because of COVID. We thought 2020, we was going to be able to do this in 2021. But because of COVID, we didn't have as many meetings as we were supposed to. But God gave me a conviction and said the devil is a whole lie. We went through the test. We went through the struggle. They went through the catechism. And next week, they will be licensed and ordained by God. Not by me. By God that God put them in this position. Many didn't make it. But thanks be unto God. Everybody didn't make it, but thanks be unto God, it's his timing on who who did. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me tell y'all something. We're going to reserve. We're going to reserve some of this shouting to next week. But the Lord has been good. That even in the pandemic, there's elevation. Even in the process of fulfilling your dreams, you can come back and get elevation. God said go to come back to receive elevation. It was like the lepers. I'm speaking to you right now. It was like the lepers. He says in order to receive the miracle, you got to follow instructions. You got to be willing to go to grow. That you got to be willing to go to grow. Hear God amongst beyond people and watch God do it. And the Bible says, as they went. Woo! As you go. I look different. (laughs) Jesus, we got to get out of here. We got visitors in the church that ain't going to never come back. Y'all, but you don't understand what it took for them to get to where they are. Woo, Jesus. I am so proud of them. I took them through a lot. You hear me? A lot. I don't think, I think they was as nervous as a cat in a room full of rocking chairs. But um, they all pass with flying colors. Nobody, nobody just hit the edge. Um, they pass with flying colors. And so we thank God for all five of them. And we want you to make sure that and you talk, we got history here. This is the daughter of the previous pastor. Now, See, y'all, y'all don't pay attention to what God does. Y'all don't, y'all, do y'all see what God do? Look on the flyer. You see, the daughter of the previous pastor and the son of the previous minister that supported the pastor. You know what God is saying? As I'm approving your future and where you're going by confirming it with your past. Y'all, I 
y'all, y'all got to look beyond the physical and see what God is doing. He says, their spirits are confirming where you're going because they're growing under your leadership. Not because of Mount Charity and not because it's you. It's because the spirit that's your... Y'all, I'm just, I'm just telling you what God is doing. It's not about me. It's not about the building or the name. It's about God, and God is doing great things. Amen? Amen. God bless you on today.